how to structure your nutrient timing to make sure that you're getting the most out of your workouts for hypertrophy training, but really most types of sport training as well. There are three things of note we have to take in is how to structure all the three different macronutrients, proteins, carbs, and fats in that order. So first of all, protein feedings. Generally speaking, the first thing you want to do is get the daily amount correct, which is roughly a gram per pound of body weight per day. So if you weigh about 200 pounds, then you need about 200 grams of protein per day. How do you split that up and have optimal nutrient timing? Well, most of the research and a lot of the theory shows that you want to split them into roughly even portions per meal into four to six meals per day. Anything much less than four might not be optimal from an anabolism and anti-catabolism perspective. Anything much more than six is oh, you're probably just overkill and it's kind of like filling up your gas tank when it's half full anyway. You don't have to pull over at the gas station and stop. If you already have six meals in the system, you get almost a level amount of amino acids uh, throughout the day, so there's no reason to eat anymore. So basically, 200 grams of protein a day that you are allotted if you weigh 200 pounds, you split it up into, you know, for example, four meals of 50 grams of protein each, or five meals of 40 grams of protein each, so on and so forth, perfectly fine. Split them roughly evenly throughout the day, just doesn't have to be exact, but you know, when you wake up in the morning, pretty soon you want to eat one of those protein meals, and uh, something like four to six hours later, you want to eat another one, so on and so forth, until your last meal should be, you know, within an hour of bedtime and have a good so solid dose, even dose of protein in it. All right, now that we have these meals and we have these times, we're going to superimpose our carb allotment onto them. So first we start with our daily amount. Daily amount of carbs varies a considerable amount based on how many calories a day you're eating and your level of activity. You can eat a lot of fats or a lot of carbs, one or the other, but the more activity you have, the more training you have, generally speaking, the more carbs you have. Lots of references in tons of other YouTube videos I've done about this. Just Google the Renaissance diet and it's gonna give you all the information you need about how many carbs you need because that's another real technical discussion. But for the time being, let's say we have all our carbs we need to eat. Let's say, okay, we have 300 grams of carbs you have to eat per day. How do we time them out? Well, basically, you probably wanna have a bit more carbohydrates than your average meal. So here's actually how you can build it out. You basically take all of your protein meals that you have, so you have, let's say six meals of protein, and you superimpose all the carbs on them, and you just default to putting an even amount of carbs everywhere. So for example, if you have 300 grams of carbohydrate, and you have six meals to spread them out in, then it's basically 50 grams of carbs per meal, and you spread it out just like that. All right, so 50 grams of carbs in each meal, no big deal, it's all even. But with carbohydrate timing, we don't wanna go for exactly even, we wanna bias the carbohydrates toward certain times and away from other times. So for example, in the meal or meals before training, you probably want to go a little higher in carbohydrates, which of course means you'll have to lower other parts, we'll get to that in a bit. You wanna go a bit higher in carbohydrates to make sure that you have enough energy, you've topped up your glycogen stores, you have enough uh, blood glucose to fuel your highest performance possible during the session. In the session, if the session's longer than an hour, much longer, usually an hour and a half or more, if it's really intense, you can have a carbohydrate drink, but that's super optional. It's really sort of for super elite athletes, so on and so forth. It's very, very optional, very tiny benefit, if any. So you can have some carbs in the session, but it's a really good idea to have a bit more carbs after the training session, especially if you train twice a day because you have to replete your carbohydrates for the next time. But even if you don't, your body is more absorptive of carbohydrates after. Specifically, your muscles are more absorptive and your fat by, by comparison is less absorptive. So it's actually really good to have a lot more of your carbs after training. So before training, you're gonna bump your carbs. If you start it with a baseline of 50 carbs per meal, maybe you have 70 grams of carbs, 75 grams before training in that meal, one to three hours, before, and then in the meal right after you train, maybe 100 grams of carbs, then 75, and then back to 50, and then let's say 25 at the end of the day, because those other extra carbs had to come from somewhere. So essentially, you pulse your carbs around your training. If you have training here, you have a bit more carbs before, a bit more carbs after, and then times in which you're really far away from training, you'll have fewer carbs. So sometimes I'll wake up in the morning, and if my training's not till let's say 2 p.m., I'll have a relatively low-carb meal for breakfast, and people will be like, well, why are you doing that? What's the advantage of low carbs for breakfast? There is none, it's just I need to save my daily carbs for later in the day, for before my training, and then after my training. So that's carbs, really super simple. If you train twice a day, and hopefully we'll have this example graphed out for you as I'm talking, train twice a day, then you'll have sort of two bubbles of carbs around each one of your trainings, so on and so forth. So you just wanna cluster carbs around training. Fats, lastly, are actually super simple because they're complete opposite of carbohydrates. You have your daily amount of fats that you wanna have, and what you want to do is less fats before training. Why? Fats 
interfere with how quickly carbs are deposited into the bloodstream and processed. If you have a lot of fats before training, it delays the carb dump into the bloodstream, which can really, the reason we eat carbs is to put them into the bloodstream. So if it's a delay, then you might feel sluggish during training. Another thing is fats are a little bit more energy intensive to digest. They take a little bit more of your gastrointestinal system to get going. And thus, sometimes if you have a lot of fats, it's kind of a burden on your GI tract. And if you start training hard with a lot of fats in your system, that might actually interfere with the training. You might get a little sick, maybe get a little vomity. And fats offer no acute enhancement in training ability, so it's good to keep them away from that pre-training meal. During training, fats for sure don't belong because they really throw up. And then after training, we want carbohydrates to come into the system usually more quickly than not. And fats delay absorption, so we want less fats during that time. And then you're saying, okay, so when there's a training window, we want less fats around it, which means that the other meals will inherit high fat. So just like the example for breakfast, I said that maybe sometimes I'll have a low carb breakfast if I train at 2 p.m. If I train at 2 p.m., I might have a low carb, higher fat breakfast. Then people say, well, why are you having so many fats? What's the benefit of fats in breakfast? Nothing. I'm just trying to keep them out of my workout training window, right? That is really how you structure all of training. The one sort of mystery that remains to be talked about is carbohydrates and a circadian rhythm consumption. So we have sort of two pieces of kind of opposing logic and evidence. On the one hand, it's been shown pretty clearly that eating carbohydrates before going to sleep in many cases promotes sleep. It lets you fall asleep faster, it relaxes you more. So that's a plus side of eating a little bit more carbs towards the evening. So for example, if you eat most of your carbs in the middle of the day anyway around training, you have some carbs left for the morning and some for the evening meal. Is it a good idea to maybe take some from the morning and put them in the evening meal or vice versa? So carbs promote sleep and relaxation in many analyses. So maybe that's a reason to put carbs later in the evening. But on the other hand, some early, not so complete, but very interesting circadian rhythm research in nutrition shows that biasing more of your carbs towards the morning is actually better for a variety of reasons and might enhance sleep over the long term and especially the quality of your sleep. So it leaves us guessing as to what the correct answer is. The verdict is we're not so sure, so don't get too religious with anything yet, but Whichever one of those strategies optimizes your sleep quality is the way to go. So for example, if you're in a fat loss phase and you want to feel nice and full and the carbs really de-stress you and put you to sleep and that's how you get your best sleep if you have carbs before you go to bed, that's probably your best bet. On the other hand, in a muscle gain phase, you're shoveling tons of carbs before you go to bed, and you guys may be having this experience where you're trying to fall asleep, but you're physically radiating heat from all the carbs as they're burning, and you're like, oh my God, I'm so hot and so energetic, I can't fall asleep. Your sleep quality suffers because of those nighttime carbs. Then maybe you can move them more into the morning and keep the last meal relatively lower in carbs. So the verdict on carb displacement through the day outside of your training windows is do whatever gives you the most energy through the day and whichever strategy promotes the best quality of sleep. That's it for now. See you guys for the next video. Folks, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, check out all the links we've posted for you in the description. And if you want more information on this exact topic, look for the scientific principles of hypertrophy training due out at some point in 2020.